What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Kita, and this is Psychopath Exposure. If this is your first time in the channel, <laughs> if this is your first time in the channel, thanks for showing up. We're gonna talk about some serious. Shit. If this is your first time in the channel, welcome. That's all I got. Wanted to read a comment from uh, one million. Came in yesterday. He asks, so wait, if we are blocking their numbers and going no contact, isn't that the same thing as a discard and they view us as a narcissist? Good questions. One mil, I've been reading your comments and uh, you ask the tough questions. You ask the tough questions. I like that. I like that. No, it's not the same thing at all. Let me explain why. You have to understand that we're going, we're going on the pretense here that you've been betrayed, discarded, abused, cheated on by a psychopath, narcissist in the first place. We're going on the pretense here that this psycho that threw you to the street, that this narcissist left you to rot, left you a vegetable of yourself, a shadow of yourself. We're going on the pretense here that the narcissist already severed the relationship. They were infidels, they were traitors. They were liars. They took advantage of you. They abused you. Now you're in a situation where you're trying to recover. You're trying to go no contact for your protection. You're going no contact to keep this predator out of your life so that you can give your, your, your mental health a chance to heal. Because if you don't go no contact, these pieces of shits do what, what we call the Hoover attempt. After a while, after they ghost you, and they go off and monkey branch to someone else into another relationship and they're cheating behind your back or whatever. Then they come back a few months, sometimes a week later, and they torture you again. So we go no contact in order to heal and move forward so that we don't continue going back on that merry-go-round. The narcissist knows exactly what they're doing. They know they're a piece of shit. They know what they're doing behind, behind your back is wrong. And they do it anyway because they have no fucking conscience. They do it anyway. They ascribe to the school of thought that cheating is okay and that you just got to deal with it. And if you don't like it, get the fuck out. Well, no, you get the fuck out. You get the fuck out. And that's why we go no contact. That's why we put these boundaries in, in the situation. Now, we're not discarding them. Again, we're going on the pretense that we have already been discarded. That you have already been discarded. And now they're trying to come back. They're trying to come back and fix the unfixable. And because you're so trauma bonded in the situation, because you feel worse not having them in your life, even though they're a complete total piece of shit infidel and should burn in hell, you take them back and they screw you again. And it's always worse the second time and the third time and the 17th time, isn't it? That's why we establish these boundaries because it's very, very hard to heal from this type of abuse, from narcissistic abuse, if you continue having a relationship with the toxic predator, if you continue talking to them and getting those urges to hook up and get back together. And let's not, let's not forget how many narcissists out there cut off all intimacy. No more sex for you. That's, what, that's why they punish you. Okay? Remember, there's always something that, that we do unintentionally there's something that we do that doesn't fit their narrative and all of a sudden you have to pay the price you have to be punished now you have to be punished because they idealized the situation that was gonna work out in their favor they wanted to have the best of both worlds they wanted to have a side chick they wanted to have a side dude they wanted to have a harem they wanted to do all these things that was never discussed that you never agreed on that you never signed off on they want to have all those things and the minute you call them out and the minute you say hey wait a minute no that's not acceptable then they're like oh really Okay, I foresee changes. Now I'm going to punish you. Now I'm going to hit you where it hurts. Now I'm going to tell you that I'm not seeing anybody and I'm still seeing the same person. And now when you find, now when you find out that I'm still talking to that person, I'm going to gaslight you. I'm going to gaslight you and I'm going to tell you that, oh, they're going through a difficult situation. I just, I just need to help them out for a little bit. Oh, it's just that they haven't, you know, my husband still hasn't filed for the divorce and, and he's giving me shit about it. So technically, yeah, we're still married, but you know, this and this and the other. You are being gaslit. You are being, is, is it gaslit or gas? 
lighted for another video. They take you on this fucking crazy journey to hell. And you know the whole situation is already damaged. You know the whole situation is unwarranted. Your friends don't even want to talk to you anymore because they're sick and tired of hearing about your abusive um, trauma stories. They're, they're sick and tired of it, really. They don't want to hear how, what, you got back with this person for the 17th time and they did it again? Like, please, I, I don't have the energy to help you anymore. And then you end up pushing away your friends and your family. It's true. It's true and you know it. So the reason we go no contact is so that we can give ourselves a chance to heal. So when they try to come back, when they try to have their cake and eat it too, they realize, oh shit, I can't come back. This person actually put walls. They have a barrier now. Okay, I'm going to become an obsessive stalker psycho and I'm going to go over that boundary. Okay, well, you know what? You put another fuck, you put a stronger boundary. You put a stronger boundary. They call you from another number, you block that number. They call you from another number, you block that number. They send you another email, you don't read the email, you block it. They text you from another number, you don't read the text, you know it's them. You, you'll know it's them from the very first two words that they say. You don't read the text, you block it, no contact. You continue no contact. They show up at your door, you call the police. Simple as that. They, they get violent, they get crazy, you drop a restraining order on their ass. They violate that, they go to jail. You, 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 see what I'm, you see what I'm saying here? I don't give a fuck if they think that we're the narcissists. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't give a fuck about that. If they lied, cheated, betrayed you, and did all this type of bullshit that you guys in this community already know and have learned and have been studying, that's it. That relationship is over. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they think. As a matter of fact, they're just projecting onto you. They're blame shifting onto you. They're running a smear campaign onto you, okay? Because they got got. They got got, okay? You're onto them, you call them out, and you establish your boundaries, and now they're like, oh, fuck. They must be the crazy person, right? That's, that, that's what they got to do. Because, see, these narcissists are so delusional. They're so delusional, and all they want is to win, it doesn't come, they don't come from a place of authentic love. It's not authentic love, it's a competition. It's control. They want to win. They want to know that they have control over you. I sa I've been saying this since my first video. You want, to you want to destroy a narcissist for real? You want to heal from this shit? You take control back, away from the narcissist. And you expose them for what they are, and that shit's over. Watch them lose their, sh watch them lose their shit all of a sudden, and they'll end up in jail. But most of the time, they leave you the fuck alone because they're like, oh shit, I'm not going to waste my time with this person anymore when I have this harem over here that I can just jump into. The only reason they keep coming back is because they know they can. They know you're weak. They know you're trauma bonded. So they'll feed you some sob story. They'll feed you some sob story. Okay? And sometimes you're, you, might, you actually might be dealing with like a vulnerable narcissist. These are the ones that they, they, they do shit. They fuck shit up. Right? And then they, then they come back with their tail between their legs and they realize that they're about to lose you. And now they're crying and, and oh, I'll never do this again. I can't live without you. You've heard the sob story. You, you've seen the crocodile tears. And then you take them back and, and that, at the end of the night, the next day, they're doing the same thing. They're out, they're out with the same person or, or, or another, another one from their harem. Come on. Um, so no, it's not the same, one mil. It's not the same at all is not the same. We're not doing the same thing. We're not discarding them. As a matter of fact, breaking up with a toxic person, breaking up with a toxic person that has been abusive, that's a fucking monster. That's not called a discard, okay? That you're, you're, you're ending a toxic relationship. You're ending something that's detrimental to your health, that's dangerous. That is not a discard. A discard is what the narcissist does to their victims. When they just ghost them, they just ghost them overnight. They're like, that's it, oh, that's it. They just don't call you, they find someone else, they're fucking someone else, and they just completely ghost you. That's a fucking discard. When they cut off sex, they cut off intimacy, and they make up all sorts of bullshit for years. But behind your back, they're, they're, they're banging other people. You've been discarded at that, at that point. You're just being used for supply, probably money. At that point, it's probably money or some shit. Maybe that they need a place to live or some shit. All right? No, it's not the same as a discard. And 
I don't know, something tells me you're just asking tough questions, and if you are, I appreciate that. But if you're not, I just wanted to explain to you how it's not the same thing. It may look like the same thing to someone that's uneducated in this type of abuse, but it's by far not the same thing. Think about a normal relationship that you may have had in high school or in college that wasn't toxic, and you guys just broke up. And you didn't have this trauma bond. You never, you didn't feel discarded. They didn't cheat on you. The relationship just went sour. You had different goals. Maybe, hey, you were going to college out of state and they were going to, to local community college and you had your dreams or they had their dreams and you didn't or you both had dreams and you were going to different places. And it's like, well, you come to that point in the relationship where it's like, hey, I'm going to Duke. And it's like, okay, I'm going to Notre Dame. I'm going to University of Miami. I'm going wherever the fuck, right? And it's like, well, this is not going to work. Not gonna have a long distance relationship for four years, and you that's it. And it just ends. And there's no trauma bond. And you, people date other people and, and, and life goes on. This happens all the time. Not every breakup is a toxic, psychopathic, narcissistic entanglement like this. Not everything is a nightmare. Not everything is a nightmare. But we only talk about the nightmares here because this this is a uh, psychopath exposure channel. So no, it's not the same thing, man. Uh, but thanks for thanks for submitting your question. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, if you guys have any more questions that you'd like me to answer in another video, feel free to drop your questions below in the comments. Also, remember if you'd like to work directly with me, I do have a one-on-one -on -one private coaching program so that I can help you guys recover from a narcissistic discard and how to heal from trauma bonds and get on with your life and also how to help you establish no contact boundaries. 100% no contact boundaries. If you'd like more information on that, click the link below in the description and um, I'll send you more details to see if we're a good fit for each other. Um, that's all I got for today. If you got any value out of this, please hit a like, subscribe to the channel so we can continue growing the community. Um, hope everyone's having a wonderful day. My name is Kira. This is Psychopath Exposure. I've only said that like 10 times. I will see y'all in the next video. Take care.